This truck. This truck. It's got to have been the worst hobby experience of my life so far. But it's done. Hey everyone, it's hobby journey time. I'm Beef and in today's video I have built an orc truck. I started in the normal way, cutting the parts and cleaning up the mold lines as you do. Then I got a little bit ahead of myself and realised that, well, I'm not French. <laughs> Which leads us into today's history with beef. Yay! Uh, Napoleon was considered to be one of the greatest generals to ever live, but he has two major flaws in my eyes. Number one is, he's French, and uh, me being an Englishman, this obviously doesn't sit too well. <laughs> and number two, he was left-handed. Um, yeah, no offence to all you lefties out there, but majority vote and all that lot. Which brings me on to the point of this. I built it left-hand drive. Now, I get why Napoleon forced his left-handedness upon the world, because he wanted to be able to draw his pistol if ambushed whilst riding his horse. That's why approaching vehicles pass on the left in French-influenced countries. But why does my orc truck need to follow his rules? I don't think it does. So, I snapped the front off and broke the steering column off, I made it right on drive. I then decided to try out my new airbrush and I primed the model and decided to undershade it with a muddy pink, a mix of Emperor's Children and Rhinox Hide. This will give an unusual undertone to the model and emphasize the yellow later on. I then went back to the airbrush and sprayed it yellow. And surprisingly, it was very, very easy to apply the yellow with an airbrush that alone is worth its money because yellow is just a notoriously hard pigment to paint on it always ends up with problems but it was so smooth and so simple i wish i'd have got one sooner i then whipped out my cruddy homemade wet palette and decided to start with the metals so I base coated pretty much everything with metals and when I got to the main chassis part of the car I figured eh, it's, it's not applying very well, it's taking too long, shall I risk putting it through the airbrush? And I did. And it worked. And it was a lot faster. So again, airbrush coming up a big big win i just need to get more confident with it and a bit more skillful i think i then started to pick out all the metal bits on the things that i had painted yellow i started doing all the hanging poles etc on the side panels and i picked out a few different multicolored panels on the vehicle itself and once all that was done i decided to move on to hash nut copper and i went back over little bits on some of the things that I'd painted metal. I picked out some particular spots on the engines and the exhaust and here, there and everywhere and just gave it a little bit more flair so it wasn't just one black silver colour. Then I decided to add a little bit of grime to the chassis and some other parts by mixing the remainder of the lead belcher and hash nut copper together and watering it down an awful lot to give a sort of thin rust sort of effect with the copper element and also some shiny silver bits over the copper areas as well. It turned out quite well, honestly, for such a simple mix of things. I also added black to the rubber of the tyres, but this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because I glued the wheels on. Now, again, this was me getting ahead of myself. I wish I hadn't. I should have kept them separately and they would have looked an awful lot better. But no, nope, I, I rushed it and I messed it and I had to sort of blank it out in the end with 
a black wash over the whole thing. I guess it goes to show that I've learnt from this mistake. I won't be gluing the wheels on until they're done in the future. Definitely after this. Now, this next part is the reason why I've chose to paint the thing yellow. I'm not going to do freebooters anymore. I'm going to go Evil Suns, I think, because they are my colours. The black, white and yellow with a little bit of gold, which is pretty much my colours. So I moved on to doing the blacks and the whites and the yellows and the golds and anything else that needed to be put onto the panels before it gets its wash and assembly. But during assembly, me being me, I accidentally picked it up by the back panels and I ended up snapping them off and they wouldn't fix properly again. So I had to use some sprewy gooey gluey stuff that I'd made and just kind of patch it back together. It's it's worked, but obviously it doesn't look the best anymore, sadly, but never mind. Learning experience. So after all that, and after putting countless holes in my homemade wet palette, I got annoyed and decided to buy one of the wet palettes from Redgrass Games. And my god, this thing is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm not just saying it because obviously I'm in no way affiliated with them. I've bought this off my own back. It's wonderful. It really, really is. It makes a huge, huge difference. I'm telling you that. <laughs> so I got the whole thing set up and I decided to stick some pennies in underneath, but then changed my mind. Um, I put the pennies in there, obviously, because you're leaving water in something, it helps stop it smelling, etc but I put them in the middle. I should have put them in the corners, really. So I've changed my mind and moved them out. But yeah, it's wonderful. It hydrates the paint perfectly. I've, I've had paint in there for two days, three days, four days, and it's still fine. And I love it. I love it to bits. It's brilliant. If you're still using a dry palette or a homemade one, just get a wet palette. It doesn't have to be f from these guys, you know, um, but they they know what they're doing. <laughs> they really do. I also decided to get the little pot holder because me and my twitchy, shaky hands, I, I tend to knock pots over. And obviously, I don't really want to decant the Earthshade and null Oil, so they can sit in a nice little pot holder on the side of the palette. And with all that, it's finally time to paint the crew because the truck's all ready. It just needs a driver and a gunner. So I set about setting up my greens and following, I believe it was Squid Mars, Orc Skin, I think it is. But it's 50-50 uh, with Death World Forest and Elysian Green. And then you work your way up to Moot Green with it. It's Honestly, I love it. I think it's really, really good range of colours and very, very versatile. I'm still trying to get my light placements correct with them. And also I need to think about how the paint shrinks because sometimes I think I've got it to the edge and I really, really haven't. But anyway, I carried on and I painted up the orcs, got them all ready painted up their armour and started fitting them. So I set my stall out, got them all nicely arranged, ready to be stuck together. And that's when the problems occurred. Because if you remember at the start of the video, I said I snapped the front of the vehicle off, which I did. So now I've got the problem of it not mounting correctly and it being the mounting point for the steering wheel of the driver and half of the gunner platform. So yeah, this created an awful lot of issues, 
but I managed to get around it by just taking the craft knife and scraping away the paint and then holding the model for about 15 minutes which gave me a little bit of achy hands but thankfully it worked and with the front end glued on and the driver in place I decided to attempt to tackle placing the gunner in now this is where I admittedly lost my patience now I'm usually quite a cool and calm collected individual but this really really riled me up I managed to get the gunner platform stuck in now I don't have any footage of this I'm afraid I managed to get the gunner platform stuck in correctly and it came to fitting the gunner and the gun to the mount and silly me I didn't know how wide it was because I forgot to incorporate the ammo box that sticks on the side of the gun and basically I had to bend and twist and readjust the mounting point for the gun to actually fit on so whilst I was doing this and manipulating the model I ended up nicking the corners of the paintwork all over the vehicle which I wasn't very happy about because obviously I spent a lot of time on this model and for the last thing to be stuck on it to just basically ruin the entirety of it I thought so yeah all in all I made a mess but here's the finished model and that's going to be me for this episode I do hope you have enjoyed it and I have now got a Patreon yeah you can actually support me if you like my content you can join my Patreon and I've got a discord now as well so you'll have access to that you can ask me some questions I'll put more photos of progress of things that I'm working on like sneaky peeks for videos on there and yeah I hope to see you all when I see you yeah in the next episode take care of yourselves and happy hobbying goodbye